Lords of the Deep is a 1989 sci-fi horror film from director Mary Ann Fisher. The movie opens with the dropship sequence from Aliens on the Commodore 64. My god, that's obscure. <laughs> Nothing like starting a video with a reference three people will get. Anyway, Lords of the Deep. So, a movie about the ocean starts in space. We get a surprisingly large amount of visual effects for an intro in a Corman film. And the intro text sets things up. In the year 2020, uh-oh, man has used up and destroyed most of the Earth's resources. Large corporations began to develop experimental undersea habitats in the hopes of conquering a new frontier. So essentially, ocean, the final frontier. The U.S. now has a fully functional undersea lab. The company funding this is Martell Incorporated. The head scientist, Claire, seems to have her face locked in a perpetual frown. Looks like she's about halfway through this giant shot of Yukon Jack. She experiments with the plastic wrap and discovers it moves around when placed in a beaker. For some reason, she decides to dunk her hand in the bowl with a jellyfish. This causes her to start tripping balls. I'm so high right now. I have no idea what's going on. Commander Dobler is arguing with the ship's computer. He gets a call from the head of Martell, and it's Roger Corman. <laughs> oh, shit. When the producer shows up in your movie to tell you you're behind schedule. Over in maintenance, these guys are working on old PC parts. Should they really let the vines grow all over the equipment? Meanwhile, Napoleon Dynamite and this guy are getting drunk. The sub seems to be floating a little too close to the ground. Claire's upset that for some reason, people keep calling her Terry. Just then, the love fest is interrupted by these guys. Why are they doing this on the floor in the hallway? Oh no, the camera's shaking! They're dealing with an underwater earthquake. Sea quake? Maybe you guys wouldn't crash into the bottom of the ocean if you weren't floating two feet above it. Everything in the lab is shaking. I don't think this is OSHA approved. This is the worst safety setup ever. They should have lips on every surface to prevent this from happening. Oh well, they didn't, then this wouldn't have happened. Claire lands in the juice, and the LSD kicks in. Whoa, it's like she ate the Bundy's mystery pack. Wow, the colors. This movie switches back and forth between the base and the submarine, and I can't tell which is which. Two from the crew play rock, paper, scissors over which one is going to go investigate outside the ship and probably die. Over in the lab, why is the ceiling so high? If you've ever been in an underwater facility, space is something they don't have. I don't think vaulted ceilings in an underwater lab is a hot commodity. The sub's on the way to the base to relieve the team of duty. However, after the earthquake, it's stuck somewhere. They send Fernandez out to look for the missing sub. He finds the crashed sub within seconds. Chadwick fixes the power in the base. He drops his sonic screwdriver and... something happens. Fernandez tells them he found the sub, but the crew's missing. The doc's patching up Claire's hands when... Whoa! It's slime filled with stripper glitter. It's really cool. The crew finds Chadwick. They open his suit and, no, oh, he's been liquefied. Ugh, it's like somebody sneezed in his suit. Well, do we bury him or flush him down the toilet? Claire discovers whatever's in Chadwick's suit is exactly like the stuff she's been studying. So she puts it in the aquarium. Fernandez is back and finds out about Chadwick. Uh, your buddy is now this big jellyfish. Claire and the doc then do some experiments on the sea sludge. Dobler spies on the crew. The uniforms look like quilts that have been stitched onto jumpsuits. Claire checks in on Chadwick, and he's evolved into a man tyke. Dr. Claire goes to tell Dobler that Chadwick's evolving. He doesn't seem to care. Later that night, Claire and O'Neill are discussing the dangers of the past few hours. She tries to use sex to convince him of her findings. Well, I could convince you. Okay, but this time I get to be Neptune, King of the Sea. But then she just goes to sleep. She then has psychedelic dreams. Is this an Enigma video? We need your trust. She wakes up inside cotton candy. Claire heads to the lab to find out Chadwick has now evolved into Mantine. Uh-oh, another earthquake. They build this base on a fault line? O'Neill goes to the lab to see Chadwick. I'll never eat fish sticks again. Dobler arrives to see the change along with the rest of the team. They have a big meeting. Dobler sending Fernandez to get the other shuttle so they can get out of there. Claire wants to know what they're going to do with Chadwick Fish. Dobler suggests they leave it behind. Now that their crewmate has become a fish, 
They decide to get drunk. Claire tries to communicate. Fernandez is attacked by the alien stingrays. There will be no Steve Irwin jokes. Chadwick Fish escapes. Dobler and his lackey go looking for the fish with some makeshift lightsabers. They track the creature in the base. The others also look for it. What they end up discovering is the base has rats? A bajillion dollar facility at the bottom of the ocean and they still couldn't rat proof it. Claire runs into something found in most Corman films. A shower. Only no shower scene. I'm shocked. Seaver gets locked in the lab and Dobler drains the air out of the room so he dies. Claire runs into the next evolution. The team finds Seaver. I forbid you to conduct an autopsy. Because if you do, you'll discover what really happened. Uh-oh, Claire's dosing again. She hears a voice telling her where to go. That's a return to yourself. The return to innocence. The team goes looking for Claire. This is certainly the best way to get shot. Claire? It's me, don't shoot! I'm gonna surprise you, don't shoot me! Claire takes a sub to follow the voices in her head. O'Neill gets himself killed. The sub is gliding along this track. Oops. Okay, he's not dead, just unconscious. Claire is now following a bunch of alien stingrays. Oh wait, this is the final boss of Parasite Eve. O'Neill is awake. Claire drives the submarine right into the giant underwater vag. She gets to a point where it's safe to disembark. Inside the pink... uh... thing? There's breathable oxygen. Oh, it's all sticky. She finds a bubble to look out, and I gotta say, that's a genuinely good effect. She wanders around a little more and runs into Chadwick. He's no longer a fish! Is this real or am I tripping again? He explains the aliens used him to get to her. The doctor does an autopsy on Seaver and discovers what really happened. So Dobler kills her. Chadwick explains the Stingrays are a hyper-intelligent alien race. They ruined their planet and came here to warn us so we don't do the same to Earth. Oh, great. Invaded by a race of indestructible hippies. Dobler reveals his true purpose. He was sent by Martell to find the aliens and exterminate them. O'Neill and Dobler then have a dual Star Trek style. Stanley goes looking for Claire. Why did they need the other sub to escape if this base has like 50 of them? The aliens sink Stanley's sub. Back at the lab, Corman isn't happy. You are over time and budget. I'm having you replaced. Claire returns to the base. When two people love each other very much. Claire finds everyone else dead. He traps her and O'Neill in a hallway and drains it of air. They almost suffocate until... Why are you hitting the wall? Why not the obviously flimsy cover? Alright, they hit the wall and the panel falls off. Claire almost dies, but Chadwick Fish gives her life. O'Neill manages to cut enough wires to kill the computer. The duo try to escape. Oh no, the camera again! They run into Dobler. Another fight. Only this time, Claire hits him and they escape. Dobler dies, and the sub gets away safely. Uh, I guess you could say this is two in the pink, one in the stink. The uh, movie then gives the audience a talking to. Learn from us. We have escaped and traveled here to Earth where the water is plentiful. And now your race is hurtling down the same destructive path to oblivion. Reject humanity. Return to fish. O'Neill sees that all the good people are still alive. You were right all along. <sighs> no, they were. Then stock footage and the end. Well, that was abrupt. The movie was shot on sets in Venice, California in 1988. This was Corman's attempt to capitalize on the underwater film craze of the late 80s. In the span of a few years, we got Deep Star 6, The Evil Below, Endless Descent, Leviathan, and The Abyss. Ironically, this film, probably the lowest budgeted one of the group, had the most in common with The Abyss, the most expensive film in the group. While the others are essentially undersea monster movies, both The Abyss and Lords of the Deep were about finding aliens living under the ocean they were trying to steer humanity away from its own destruction. This was one of Janusz Kaminski's first films. He was working as the second unit DP, but his shots were so good, it wasn't matching the quality of the first unit. Rather than try to elevate the first unit, they took him off the film and replaced him with someone else. 
Corman then placed him as the first unit DP in the Terror Within 2. Kaminsky's career took off from there, and now he frequently works with Steven Spielberg. He's won multiple Oscars as well as 41 other industry awards. Some of his shots did make it into the final film. I was joking about it in the video, but I came to find out that the slime they used in the movie really was just store-bought Mattel slime, specifically glitter slime. Not letting good production go to waste, Corman reused the underwater footage for his other movie, The Alien Within. Speaking of, future special effects Oscar winners the Skotech brothers did the underwater effects in four weeks, which is why the underwater stuff is actually quite good. Director Marianne Fisher worked with Corman as a producer on films like Battle Beyond the Stars and Forbidden World. This was her first and last time directing. After this, she returned to producing on movies like Dracula Rising and Blood Fist 8. The movie was recently riffed on the 12th season of Mystery Science Theater in 2018. The episode is also included as a bonus feature on the Shout Factory Blu-ray. Lords of the Deep is an entertaining underwater adventure. It's got a good cast, mostly good effects, and while the Save the Planet shtick is corny, they didn't beat you over the head with it too much. I enjoyed it a lot. Isn't that right, Chadwick Fish? Give me back that filet fish. Give me that fish. Give me back that filet fish. Give me that fish. If you want to hear some folks who love and defend movies like I do, you should listen to my podcasting friends, Overhated with Scott Weinberg, and Junk Food Cinema with Brian Salisbury and C. Robert Cargill. That's right, the father of Bagul. Junk Food Cinema might love post-apocalyptic films almost as much as I do. They're available on all your favorite podcasting platforms.